uh, the problem of pipe flow from an engineering perspective. So basically, uh, the problem we're uh, interested in is uh, to analyze or to design a pump that can pump flow inside a pipe or a system of pipes uh, that include valves, bends, T's, um, going uphill, downhill, um, expanding, um, or, or, or all kind of different uh, variations uh, that can happen inside the pipe. For example, let's consider one example and then um, work out the example and define everything that we need. So let's assume that um, uh, we have a, like a little hill here, right? Uh, and we want to pump water uphill. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to have a pipe system or a pipe uh, that basically goes uphill here, right? Starts from here. And then there's a bend. Uh, there is another bend here, right? Going again uphill, right? Uh, here, and then it becomes a straight right there, all right? And then let's assume that there's a valve here, right? There's a valve here, all right? Uh, and then basically the question is, uh, well, how much uh, pressure I need here uh, and downhill to be able to pump the water um, uphill. So as we know, the right way to solve this problem is to solve the Navier Stokes equation, uh, but we know that's not trivial, it's not easy. Uh, and uh, Poisson flow, we also know that uh, when the speed is larger than uh, critical speed, a flow becomes turbulent, Poisson flow works for a laminar flow. Uh, and, and generally, I mean, this is a very applied problem. So we want to have a handy way so that a technician can really work out uh, the, 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 the equations and everything and calculate the pump needed and basically move on with that. So therefore, the way that we uh, handle this problem is basically by uh, starting from uh, the energy equation. So we know that in the absence of viscosity, uh, energy or a potential of the flow to do some work uh, is um, a summation of pressure plus uh, so-called uh, the kinetic energy, one half rho v squared, that's kinetic energy per unit volume, plus rho gz, which is the potential energy per unit volume. All right, so going from point one to point two, uh, we know that, well, uh, the energy downhill, um, okay, could be, well, let's say equal to, so P1 plus 1 half rho V squared to power 1, rho G Z1 is equal to uh, P2 uh, plus 1 half rho V2 squared, and this is in the, in the absence of any loss, plus rho G Z2, all right? Again, we assume there's no viscosity, no losses, all right? Now, typically what people do, um, and this is just a notation, is they basically divide both sides of this, this equation um, by rho g, and they call it gamma. So gamma is defined to be rho g, and therefore what they do is say uh, p1 over gamma plus, now the second term becomes v1 squared over 2g plus z1, um, that's equal to P2 over gamma plus V22 over 2G plus Z2. As you can see, every term has the dimension of uh, length, all right, or height. Um, and therefore, it's customary uh, to call each term a so-called head. Head. The first term is called pressure head. Uh, the second term is called velocity head. And the third term is called height head. So basically, instead of uh, using pressure or Pascal or, or, or um, PSI, uh, people in the industry usually talk about head and the unit for head is meters. So I need a pump that can generate a head of five meters or 24 meters, or, or so on, so forth, all right? Good, so, so far we didn't consider any losses, uh, but it's natural that if you want to take the losses into account, uh, well, we can add the loss terms uh, into the right side of the uh, equation. So head loss, and this is a, a head loss, or loss is due to the head. 
unexpected loss. And that includes everything, viscosity, turbulence, whatever that causes energy to uh, get dissipated is going to appear um, in uh, this term. All right. There are some other details. Um, and one is, well, now this is a perfect equation because now we have, um, and, and again, th this looks like Bernoulli's, but it's not Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation uh, has its own uh, requirement. It has to be no viscosity along a streamline and, and so on and so forth. Um, but again, the, the first three terms, pressure plus kinetic energy plus potential energy, it really doesn't matter, right? It's just energy. And we're modifying that energy equation with the loss. So now everything has been taken into account if properly calculated. So this is called energy equation for pipes. All right. Now, um, V velocity, if you look at this term, this term, the velocity here, um, is the actual velocity of fluid particles, right? And this term talks about the kinetic energy. So, uh, well, if velocity inside the pipe is uniform, then it's very easy to just say, well, if this is velocity, this is a pipe, and velocity is uniform everywhere, then of course uh, the kinetic energy per unit volume is v to the power two uh, over two uh, g if we basically normalize it by rho g, right? Um, but now what happens if the velocity is non-uniform? Uh, well, of course, then we have to integrate, right? The velocity is variable, um, lower, higher, right? In order to get the kinetic energy, uh, we have to integrate the, the velocity across the pipe, right? Specifically, what we need to do is, um, and if we talk about the exact uh, energy per unit volume, uh, the term is going to be one half rho v squared as it appears in the Bernoulli's equation. So if we want to integrate, then basically what we need to do is we have to integrate one half rho v squared across the area because now velocity is different at a different location. If we integrate this and if we divide that by area, that gives us the total, the correct kinetic energy um, per unit volume. Let's call it E tilde, energy per unit volume kinetic energy per unit volume, all right? And, um, well, then the point is what velocity I need to put in my energy equation here. Uh, do I put, if the velocity profile is non-uniform, then do I put the minimum, the average, the maximum? Uh, well, what I know and what I need is that I want this term to be exactly the kinetic energy, right? I don't want to be anything less than the kinetic energy. Uh, now, what velocity is easy to have? The average velocity, right? So, for example, if Q, volume flow rate, is given, right, then uh, average velocity, V bar, is Q divided by area, volume flow rate divided by area. So, average velocity is what we usually have in practical applications. So, if I can express that terms in terms of the average velocity, that would be nice. So, basically, uh, what I want to have is I want that energy term, or the second term here, let's just put it here. I want to write this in terms of V average 1 to the power 2 over 2G, but clearly, uh, this may not be the total energy, so there might be a need for a coefficient in front uh, called alpha. Now, let's see how we calculate alpha. Okay, so uh, basically uh, what we're going to do is um, uh, we're going to calculate the energy, the, the actual energy. This is a true energy. Uh, and then uh, parallel, I'm going to calculate velocity, average velocity, and then uh, I'm going to basically set them equal to each other. So this alpha is a function of the velocity profile, right? Um, so if the velocity profile is uniform, right? So alpha, if velocity profile is uniform, then clearly alpha is equal to one, right? Because we don't need any coefficient. We everywhere is just uniform. But if it's non-uniform, then it's going to be uh, other than one, right? So let's work at an example so that it becomes uh, more uh, clear. Let's consider uh, the so-called uh, the Pozoi flow. Um, so we have so flow, and we know for a Pozoi flow the velocity profile is one over four mu dp dx times 
uh, R2 minus capital R to the power 2. Okay, now let's calculate the energy, the E tilde. So E tilde um, for a circular pipe is 1 over area of the pipe, which is pi R squared, integral of 1 half rho, V to the power 2, so that's going to be 1 over 16 mu 2 dp dx to the power 2 times r2 minus r2 to the power 2 times dA. Now, it's a circular pipe, so it has a, a circular symmetry, and we know that velocity, as long as we're at a given uh, radius from the center, uh, velocity is uniform. So dA uh, can be 2 pi r times dr. So 2 pi r dr. So this is my dA. This is my A. And uh, this term is V2 for Pozoi flow. All right. And that's going to give us the actual kinetic energy uh, per unit volume um, of the flow inside the pipe. All right, so let's work out the integral. Let's take everything constant out. So that's going to be 1 over pi r squared. Uh, I can bring 1 half rho out, assuming rho is constant. 1 over 16 mu squared is out. dp dx, assuming it's not a function of r, is out. Um, and then the 2 pi from here is out. And then I'm going to have integral from r equal to 0 to capital R, which is the radius of the pipe, uh, r2 minus capital R to the power to the power 2 times r dr. So a little simplification, pi, pi, 2, 2. Um, and I think that's it for here. That's okay. So they will get equal to um, rho. 16 mu 2 r2 dp dx to the power 2 uh, integral of r4 minus plus r4 minus 2 r2 r2 times r dr going from r0 to capital R. All right. Um, okay, so this is equal to a rho over 16 mu 2 r2 dp dx to the power 2. Uh, integral, I can write it another step, it's okay. Uh, r5 plus r4 r minus 2 r3 r2 dr. This is uh, equal to rho over 16 mu 2 r2 dp dx to the power 2 so that becomes r6 divided by 6 plus r4 r2 divided by 2 minus 2 r4 r2 divided by 4 and this has to go from 0 to r. So 0 gives us 0. If I put r, I get r6. r6 times 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2. And these two cancel each other. So therefore, I get r6 divided by 6. Therefore, this is equal to rho over 16 mu 2 r2 dp dx to the power 2 times r6 divided by 6. All right, and then this r2, this power becomes 4, and 6 times 16 is 96. So that is uh, rho over 96 mu 2 dp dx to the power 2 times r4. That's the actual energy, kinetic energy per unit volume. So remember, E tilde, uh, okay, is equal to, therefore, rho over 96 mu 4 dp dx to the power 2 times r4.
Now, I would like to write this one in terms of uh, 1 half rho v bar to the power 2 plus an alpha in front. Okay, so this is important. Uh, I want to write this expression in this form. All right, and really the big question is what is alpha? All right, let's first calculate uh, v bar. Okay, so I can go back here. I already have velocity. Um, velocity is here. And what is v bar? V bar, uh, well, v bar is equal to one over area integral of v d area. I want to find the average of velocity. So I add all the velocities, multiply by d a d a, and then divide it by a. So that's going to be one over pi r squared integral of a one over four mu d p d x r2 minus r2 dA, same, uh, likewise, same example uh, with the same scenario, the dA is 2 pi r dr because velocity is constant at a given r. So let's take all the constants out. So I have 1 over pi r squared, 1 over 4 mu dP dx, um, 2 pi integral of r3 minus r2 r dr, r going from 0 to capital R equal to, you can do a little simplification here, pi and pi, that becomes 2. So this is going to be 1 over 2 mu r squared dp dx, and the integral is going to be r4 divided by 4 minus r2 r squared divided by 2 going from 0 to r. This term is R4, 1 over 4 minus 1 over 2, uh, which gives us uh, R4 divided by 4. So this is R4 divided by 4 with a negative sign. Um, all right. Um, so therefore, this is going to be... Um, I hope I've done everything right. Let's just quickly check. Yes, yes, yes. So that's going to be um, 1 over 8, right, uh, mu dp dx times r2 with a negative sign. So that's going to be our average velocity. And this is an important result, so it deserves a box. Okay, so V bar for the case of Pozoi flow, we found it. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this down here uh, to basically express this. So this is going to be alpha times one half rho uh, V bar 1 over 64 mu 2. I'm just substituting from here dp dx to the power 2 times r4. Okay, uh, let me see if I can just do some magic here. All right, uh, let me just get rid of this and move this term a little closer. Okay. Now, let's see if we can just simplify some of the terms. So this to the power 2 goes away with this to the power 2. Um, R4 goes with R4, right? Uh, and mu2 with mu2. And rho with rho. Um, so what we're left with is, therefore, Alpha is equal to uh, 2 times 64 divided by 96. Okay, and divided by 8, uh, that becomes 2 times 8, numerator and denominator, divided by, um, I believe this is going to be 12, right? Yep. And I can further divide this by 4, so that gives me 2. This gives me 3, so that gives me 4 thirds. So alpha is equal to 4 thirds. 
okay, for a Poisson flow. So this is for um, Poisson flow. All right, so as you can see, this is basically the way we calculated alpha. So, and again, this is for a specific um, flow. If it's a turbulent, it's different. It's a different flow regime. It's different. As long as it's non-uniform, alpha is going to be, and in fact, it can be shown that it's going to be always greater than one. For a uniform flow, alpha is equal to uh, one. So let me draw a line here. Um, and conclude. So therefore, uh, what we have here is this for a pipe flow system. We have uh, P1 over gamma, which is rho G, plus alpha 1 V bar 1 to the power 2 over 2 G uh, plus Z1 is equal to P2 divided by gamma plus alpha 2 V bar 2 to the power 2 over 2 G uh, plus Z1. Okay, uh, usually alpha is, is given or I mean, if the velocity profile is given to you, then you can use this uh, argument to um, basically do the calculation of the, uh, of the alpha. Uh, and then, of course, we have a head loss here, HL, uh, that is for the amount of losses uh, that we have in our system.